heard you. It's recording. There you oh. go. Okay. Thank Good you. Call, Scott. <laughs> You'll all get a copy of it when it. When I'm used finished. to David. Yeah. Yes. Um. Okay. I mean, um, okay. So we're moving on. I'm going to check off COVID and we're moving on to the hires and resignations. I have oh, just one other that. quick thing is um, Vin's just opened up today to the public. So mm. Chris, my husband just moved through that whole process of how to open their space to public. So if you want another perspective, maybe he could volunteer as well. <laughs> That's great. Okay. I'll write that down. As well as all their camps and stuff will be opening. Yeah, that, I mean, taking advice from the people that are opening camps makes some sense. It's not that it's not, it's, it's, it's madness, but it's, <laughs> it's happening. But they'll have learned some things by the time our yes, is even convened. absolutely. I was going to say, get some information after he's had kids or, and dealt with stuff too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we all set on COVID? Okay. Um, hires and resignations. So um, we all got the letter from um, Deb, uh, and did everybody get a chance to read it? Do you want me to read it out loud? Looks like everybody got a chance to read it. Um, it's definitely a changing of the guard in Heartland. Um, yeah. And I know that she's worked hard to uh, get into the new food service program. Um, and I suspect that the last three months have just been too much yeah. for all of us. <laughs> I think if most of us could retire, we might right now. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so, and then Christine, you said you had some other ones. Yeah, I have one more. Um, are you gonna you're gonna vote on all of them together, or do you have to accept Debs and then go on, or does it matter? I I think we can vote on all of them together. Okay. Okay, um, I don't, this one just um, has been recent. Um, I sent it to David, we just got it, um, I think maybe two days ago, so you may not have it yet. Um, it is from Amanda Hall, our kindergarten teacher, and it is, I'll, I can share it with you. Diane, do you have it? No, I don't have okay. it. I will share it with you. Um, it is, uh, I'll read it to you, dated June 11th, 2020. It's, it's addressed to myself. Please accept my resignation from my position as a kindergarten teacher at Heartland Elementary School. It has been an absolute pleasure to be part of this wonderful school for the past five years. I will miss so many aspects of this place I've called my home. I appreciate all of the support and guidance you have given me over the years. I wish you all the best. Sincerely, Amanda Hall. Um, uh, Amanda, um, is I think she'd be fine if I shared. Um, she is going to be teaching kindergarten at her uh, the school that she went to in Woodstock, Vermont, which is closer to her home. And as you all know, she has a new baby, so it's uh, sad for us because she's an amazing teacher. But it's completely um, I get it. <laughs> so. Um, on that note, she did let us know. So uh, uh, actually, why don't you finish the resignation part and then I yeah, can so share we'll the resignations. Um, okay, so uh, I'll take a motion to accept the resignations of Deb Jocelyn and Amanda Hall um, with regrets and we wish them the best of luck. Excellent. Um, we have a, a first and a second. Okay, Beth is a first, Colleen's a second. And then uh, all those in favor of that motion, please say aye or raise your hand. Aye. All those opposed? Okay, we're sad about those two. That, that's mm -hmm. a that's gonna be a big change, but I get it. Yeah, yeah, it, and it was hard for her, so. Um, I heard. <laughs> yeah. I heard it was very difficult. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> It's hard. It is, especially being a new mom. Ladies that have had babies, you know, it's 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 a challenge. Um, so uh, knowing uh, Amanda did let me know, and um, so we posted the job as anticipated, um, and we interviewed uh, last week. We interviewed. We had actually some 
great candidates. And we settled on um, uh, a young lady named Emily. I'm going to not say her last name correctly. Fugo, I think it is. Um, she is. Uh, she's teaching now um, pre-K. She's so she's in town Townsend, Vermont, I believe, and she is going to be an amazing addition to our our K one team. And they're working closely together already to pre prepare for next year. And um, we would like to offer her the job. So, um, actually, no, I take that back. We we did offer her the job. <laughs> so we are we are ahead of the game. I said to David this afternoon. I was like, so uh, Amanda resigned, but we haven't gotten approval from the board yet. And he um, he said, I think under these conditions, the lateness of it, I think they'll be okay with it. So hopefully that is okay with you. She's she's going to be quite amazing. So. Awesome. So does she have a background in outdoor education or a desire? Oh, yes, she does a little bit. Um, she um, talked about that in her interview, um, place-based education, and um, she is very much into sciences and um, really aligns with our philosophy of making K-1 very um, place-based and as play-based as we can. Um, so yes, she'll be wonderful. Awesome. Yeah, we're excited to have her. And she she and the music teacher and the PE teacher that we've hired have all been invited to our um, professional development. And they're, you know, they can't come to everything. They're still teaching in their own place, um, schools, but are, are in contact with their team teachers and staying up on what we're doing and coming when, they, when they're available, which is great. Did we... Have we officially hired the PE teacher? Yes, that was we the did. first one. Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. That was sure. Lacey Stever. We hired her a few months ago, actually. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's been a while. That's what seems, it seems like a year ago. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, we are still we are still interviewing for um, seven eight math position. Um, not getting many applicants, so I'm having Jen Tessier re refresh weekly we i broadened it a little bit today the advertisement um because we we can we can if need be hire a teacher um that has some math background but not necessarily the middle grades um licensure and um work under provisional so i'm hoping to attract some more candidates that way but we'll see it's not a it's not a it seems to be quite a shortage in the middle school math <laughs> teaching realm. Are, so. there, are there any ways to hire, um, like I know we need licensure and stuff, and stuff. I just, I think about the engineers and um, I know that they were trying to make paths for engineers to become teachers and. Yeah, y yes, there are ways. Um, there's a uh, peer review. I'm mean, Katie. You're the expert in, <laughs> in certification. Peer review, and then there's all. Uh, what is it? Alt four. Alt four transcript Alt review. Four transcript yeah. review. Yeah. So it is feasible. Yes. Well, we did. Oh. We did interview somebody who had a who did not have a teaching background at all. He came from mm -hmm. kind of like a medical business thing. He was he was very smart, but wasn't wasn't quite the right fit. Um, right. But yeah. so I mean, it, but it, we're still just not getting many candidates. Yeah. Well, if, if we still don't get any, I don't know if we can add engineering to the job description. I just think it would oh, be phenomenal yeah. to have yeah. a math teacher yep. with a practical background in mathematics in a middle school would just be amazing. Um, I can add that to the posting. Yeah. We'll see what I get this week, and then we'll continue. We still have time. I'm not panicked yet. Yeah. <laughs> I say that as an engineer who at one point thought about teaching math. Um, <laughs> So, um, so there's I a job that, opening, Nikki. I, <laughs> <laughs> I got a few other jobs on my plate right now. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, what was our kindergarten teacher's name again? Her name is Emily. Emily. You, I, it's F U G U E T, I believe. Emily. Okay. Yes, F U G U E T. If you, if you, okay. if you get, if you, get, yeah, I think so. Yeah. You get okay. Um, 
Okay, so do we have a motion um, to hire Emily Fugat for our kindergarten program? And when we meet her, she'll tell us how to pronounce her name. Yes. <laughs> I'll make okay. Sarah and Beth. Okay. Um, any more discussion? All those in favor of hiring Emily, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Congratulations, Emily. Um, <clears throat> maybe she's going to be a Miss F or Miss F. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> we'll, we'll find out. Um, okay. So, is there anything else on that front, Christine? No, not, not um, this time. Okay, so we're on to special education. So, Katie, I don't know if you have any hires that you want to transition with. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying. Um, okay. <laughs> I, have, I have a little bit, um, I have a slide I can present just to give you a look at the structure of what we intend to do for special ed next um, year cool. and to reduce caseloads um, and go with a couple of district-wide or uh, SU-wide initiatives. So I'm going to try presenting so I can keep myself on track. I'm getting, trying to get better at this. Um, okay. Let's see if I can do this. Uh, get the right one. And do you love how everybody has to talk through all of this as we do it? Um, <laughs> I hope that cognition piece. Okay. So um, for next year, Ah, and I have to learn not to touch my um, trackpad. We have hired so a couple of new people that you see new names. Um, K3 is going to be split between Karen, Carl, and Tyler. And I can't remember Tyler's last name. Um, he's coming new to us, graduating from Antioch with an um, elementary special ed uh, degree, as well as he's going to be pursuing his BCBA. So we're really excited about supporting him doing that. Um, and so he and Karen are going to look at those students and figure out a good mix to split. Um, because our fourth grade has a high number of students, uh, Zaina will be case managing those students and working embedded in the classroom, um, given whatever COVID looks like. Our new hire, Chloe Balch, um, is going to be with the fifth, sixth. <coughs> and Donna Hatch will be with the um, seven, eight, as well as following some of our high school students. Um, in the past, we've had um, out of we've had um, contracted LEAs, and we're looking at trying to have those case managers be more attached to the districts where the kids came from. So, uh, Weathers uh, Weathersfield being one, Heartland, and then the remainder of the kids who are still going from Albert Bridge, um, having their previous case managers kind of follow them. Um, it's kind of a light work in terms of it's only a couple meetings a year. These are not the kids who are placed elsewhere. They're the ones that parents had school choice. Um, so that's kind of with rounding out our special educators. We've been trying to find another special educator, but we haven't been able to. So we came up with a different plan. Um, and our plan is, as you see underneath Donna's name, um, a, po a 0.5 reading special educator. We have a lot of students who receive a program called Orton Gillingham, a very specialized reading instruction. And we've in the past been um, contracting out for that. And we have several teachers in the district now who are trained in it, but not enough to necessarily meet our need where it is. It's kind of like we, we looked at where all the need is and Heartland's a big need and so is Albert Bridge. So um, tentatively, uh, Susan Chelton from Albert Bridge is going to be in both at Albert Bridge and with Heartland. Um, we're working um, on figuring out the amount of time and depending again on COVID guidelines and going between buildings. Um, so it's not set in stone, but it's our goal. And the other we um, need to round out is our amazing speech language pathologist Trisha is not going anywhere she's still here um, we between her her caseload and the caseload that's going on in Weathersfield we have to um, we have a need for another speech language pathologist so that person will split themselves um, 
between the two buildings, um, between Weathersfield and Heartland, which will really help us um, balance out the need in with uh, the students receiving speech and language services. Um, so with that, um, I'll, I'll pause for a second, go back to, hold on, stop presenting for a minute. Does anybody have any questions on that part before I go to the second part? Um, so I guess uh, one of the responsible questions is, is um, I'm excited about that plan. It looks cool and it definitely looks different. Um, and I'm just wondering um, where you think we might be seeing cost savings or we're not seeing cost savings. And I also uh, wanted to know um, how many special ed paras we chose not to hire as a result of that plan, right. all of those things. So we, the I'll come to the, the speech language pathologist. We are replacing one person that has been a contracted service, actually two that have been contracted services in the district for a very long time, which the way it comes out, we're actually cost savings by hiring full-time people that are ours. So that's one savings. The other, our use of, we ended up with three special education paras positions that we never ended up filling, even with the comings and goings, it was sort of like ebbing and flowing, that we did not rehire for. Um, and that's where we ended up with the, um, five, six special educators actually placing Mary Beth. So um, Tyler's position is the one we traded for. And the goal being is embedding special educators in the classroom more, so less need for paraprofessionals with the smaller caseloads. Um, and I'm trying to make sure I got all of your question, Nikki. Um, that, that cost savings, was that it? The cost savings and, um, the paraprofessional positions. We we also are going to carefully look at how we rehire. We we fill the positions. Are already the positions we still need are still posted. As we find out what it what we will be configured like in the fall, we may find we don't need to fill positions that are still vacant. Because let's say we are in a classroom of twelve students with one teacher, we don't need two more paraprofessionals necessarily in that room because we've totally changed the dynamics. So we have been really careful all spring as we've talked to parents saying, we're gonna revisit the service pages, the page that dictates, you know, what personnel are working with which students and what how professional support looks like. Because if we change the landscape of the classroom, we're by default, we're gonna end up changing that support. Um, but I knew looking into this and talking to professional staff, we weren't going to change the number of students that needed to be case managed and still needed the specialized instruction. So that has been the push since what, uh, February, um, Christine, we started interviewing for special educators yeah. really early on. Um, and the other part of cost savings is we're not, um, we're, we took the shift of the LEA money and position and put it back to the buildings so that we are not paying out of district people. And we have one full-time LEA who will case manage the kids who are placed by IEP teams for the district instead of three separate positions. Um, so, well, it's a little less to also, I'm looking for fewer octopus arms. That's my <laughs> analogy. Um, octopus arms that have tentacles. Uh, each, um, that, it, um, and I know like just speaking from Donna, she's really excited about the fact that she gets to follow the kids and it makes sense for you know not a, it's not a great number of kids and it really isn't that time consuming because something else that um most of our high schools case manage so we just show up as lea we're not doing the paperwork so it's it's i think it'll be end up being more efficient um and we're being creative with the og piece too um and people have been really flexible. Um, I didn't bring Gumby and Pokey to this meeting, uh, <laughs> but I have the Gumby and Pokey uh, figures that I've been showing everybody, having to teach a few who they are, but um, just everybody practicing flexibility. Um, and hopefully, you know, we don't know what's coming up, but I think the structure will help, which will lead me to the next structure that we have changed. 
Um, we had put in the budget for a half-time evaluator to join the district. Those of you who um, may you not know, um, Leota Tucker is our one and only school psychologist who does all the evaluations for the entire SU. Um, she does need a superhero cape. Um, and she's not been able to do any of the intervention that she's awesome at around trauma because she spends her days giving kids um, academic and cognitive tests, which she's really good at that too. Um, so we had put in a half-time person and we lucked out finding a school psychologist who is relatively new. Um, she has a year under her belt. She comes very well credentialed, um, who we're actually hiring full-time. Um, we looked at where we could say where we were saving money. And so what we're going to end up having are two full-time school psychologists to split between the four schools who can then sit on, we're calling them child find teams, we're revamping the evaluation, beginning evaluation process, um, and we'll be able to help more in buildings with students and families, um, whether it's IEP teams, whether it's MTSS systems, trying to get their expertise in more than just testing. Um, so um, our mind <clears throat> slide was, um, which I can show now again, um, so I can do this, right, oh, no, or the bottom of that slide was the child, the school psychologist um, on the child find team. We used to have a pretty cumbersome, um, a, a process that took that out of the building, and now we're going to try to keep it back into the building. Um, with key people involved. Um, and the other, um, and the SLP will also sit on that team. Um, so you don't know, many of you might know Sandy um, Sark, who had been part of the SU for a while as a contracted service for speech. She's branching out with well, her own business. Um, and so she won't be doing our evaluations, but we found someone that will full time and join our staff too. Um, so there's a lot, I think staffing changes, I think the last time I checked, it's 13 new to the SU. Um, many have coming to our uh, training that we started today, um, including a couple that were coming to Heartland. Um, so excited about that. Um, and so that's kind of the, there's a big picture and depending on how it all fits in with however COVID looks, we're ready, ready to do it, but I'm excited that we have the staffing to do it. That is really um, something we've been trying to do just SU wide and Windsor has a similar model and uh, so does Weathersfield. So we're also trying to normalize some things. Katie, thank you. That's really fantastic. I think um, a lot of us on the board, um, I think about maybe even over a year ago or at least last winter, um, Karen had presented to us uh, the kind of state of the, of the, um, special education office and the caseloads in Heartland. And uh, a lot of us board members were just flat out terrified by the caseloads. And it, it really, and also hearing from parents that that was not working. Um, and so this just looks so much better as far as caseloads. Um, and, and just referencing the numbers that Karen had said were the ideal caseloads and um, not having double that. So we're, I'm personally excited about that. <laughs> Well, I think we, smaller caseloads means more interaction with kids and families on the special educator realm. And we do, so crystal ball, um, some of the stuff coming out of the AOE, as you know, has been um, vague. Some of it's been pretty good. Um, we're waiting to hear uh, about next year. None of our requirements are going to change. The feds have been really clear on that. So what we do anticipate is a surge in referrals. Um, so that was part of locking in Annie. She's the other school psychologist as soon as we could because knowing that that's going to happen. We're not certain how that'll all look because our criteria is going to change because of what happened in March, missing all the school. There's lots of technical aspects of it. Um, and at least this way, we can start off on the right foot. Case loads will rise. Um, that's gonna, it's gonna be a natural out, uh, outcome of our situation, but at least they're rising from a, man, a very manageable number 
versus um, 20, 22 um, little ones. Um, so, Brittany? Um, just because, you know, Christine and I have been talking with a couple of the, our MTSS team for about a year, and Katie, you were, you were in on those meetings too, to try to think about how to um, make a shift from, you know, kind of that you get intervention, you go directly to special education and trying to make it this um, kind of flow a little bit more. Um, so we are beefing up some of our supports at the kind of lower, like um, targeted referral kind of thing, the intervention piece um, to try and provide more supports early on and more targeted supports, even in the classroom to, so that maybe that'll help a little bit to keep, um, keep so many referrals going through special education, because there's certainly some testing we can do earlier on to target some more specific interventions to help support students. So, And around that, if we have more special educators in the classroom working with students, I talk about range a lot, whether it's paraprofessionals or teachers, we're supposed to have that range. And if Sally is sitting next to Fred and, and Sally's the one there that the teacher's there for for specialized instruction, uh, Fred can benefit too. I mean, it's not, we're, we're not in a bubble. Um, and so that'll help. Um, I think just, you know, not, not formally, but definitely um, that's what research shows. Um, you know, it's another adult providing um, assistance or intervention in a classroom, so. Um, the other, I think the last time we spoke, we didn't get final guidance about summer in ESY. Um, the state still says we can provide in-person if we want to and can do so safely following all the guidelines, but we don't have to. And then they're really careful about saying this is not indicative of what the school year guidelines will be. Um, there's that clause in two of the memos they've sent out because, um, you know, we didn't want to read into that. Um, but uh, we are still, as far as building-wide, are not opening buildings for ESY for students. We are doing remote. But if students can be served where they're going, at daycare or a day camp, we're trying to work that out with individual um, providers. Um, so far, none of the daycares are open to strangers coming in. We can do some teletherapy um, with one agency we're working with, which is great. Another one uh, I just found out today is letting us do visits outside. So if we can, we will, um, but only if they're licensed daycares or camps following the COVID guidelines. They have to be more than just registered. We, we've said it had to be licensed and following the COVID guidelines and we would um, ascertain if they're doing that or not. Um, so trying to do the best we can under the circumstances. Um, but we do have a good chunk of Heartland um, students who are identified as needing e uh, extended school year services who will be doing it remotely. So they get to keep their Chromebooks and things like that through the summer. So that's that's pretty much it. Thank you. Thanks, Katie. That was really good. Um, are there any more questions for Katie? Nope. Okay. Um, did you kind of cover the statewide update in that? I think you kind of did. Yeah, <laughs> we don't know anything. <laughs> Why does it get? <laughs> um, okay. Um, so, Katie, we'd love to have you continue to join us. Um, and, but if you want to bail, you're welcome to. Um, <laughs> it's okay, I'll stick around. I'm coming back anyway. Sounds good. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so we got early release days um, for 21. Yes, and I'm, I'm glad Patty's here. So Patty, feel free to chime in. Um, last month, uh, as you recall, I, I put a suggestion on the table of uh, having school end a little bit earlier on a Friday afternoon and making up that time. Um, on, on both ends of the of the schedule and um, I went to Patty who's one of the HEA union rep, uh, presidents to ask her to get a sense of what the staff thought about that and they I think I think her, <laughs> I think her email said they weren't thrilled but they were open if if it was really well planned and um, I can share that 
what we're doing right now with the staff, we are really focusing on um, the portrait of a graduate competencies in our professional development and working on designing in, um, interdisciplinary units that with a focus on place-based um, education and project-based education. So my goal for that time would be, you know, staff collaboration. We know that is paramount to successful interdisciplinary unit planning. So, um, but we're also in this place where we don't know what school's gonna look like next year. So I, I'm happy to go forward. Um, I don't know, I mean, I don't want it to get too late in the, in the summer, but I, I don't know that it makes sense to make definite plans right now. So I would love your thoughts. And Patty, if you wanna chime in, I would love to hear you. Christine, I think, I think you summed that up really pretty okay. well. I, I think that the thought behind it was if we're going to do that, let's plan it and plan it really well. And since we don't know what the fall is going to look like, it's it's really tricky right now. Um, but with the, you know, the new interdisciplinary um, teams that we're forming, that chunk of time would also be very beneficial. And we know we're strapped for time to meet and to have all of the different committee meetings and staff meetings that we need. So I, I think there's mixed feelings around it, but I think the general idea was let's, if we're going to do it, let's do it well. Yes. Thanks, Christine. Yeah, which is much appreciated. I mean, the staff um, is really pretty flexible and adaptable, which is awesome. And I have to say, sitting in on the planning meetings um, thus far, they started last week, just listening and, and hearing the ideas, uh, I think it's really exciting. Uh, even though we don't know what it's gonna look like in the delivery format, um, staff's really working hard to figure out um, you know, how to best plan together and coming up with essential questions and, um, and really working hard to make it really st student friendly, student driven and, and connected. So we're excited. And it's interesting, the units that they've identified um, to start with, because they're tasked with, you know, the first unit of the year, first six weeks, what's it gonna look like? And without conversing with each other, the pods, it's, it's like a beautiful progression of, of themes from K1 to 7-8, so it's pretty exciting. Yeah, it's a lot of work, um, but every, and, and people are tired, but they're, they're embracing it, which is great. So, yes, Beth. Um, just a question, so Patty, you had mentioned, like, you know, we wanna be able to do this right, like, what will it take to do it right? Like, how, how can we make that happen? Well, I think, Beth, part of the discussion was around how do we do that if we have to shuffle around the number of minutes and what does that do to the negotiated agreement? And, you know, does it does it get into like some tricky territory or, you know, I know that Windsor has done it, but I don't know that we had all of the information about how they shifted their times. Um, so I think it was just, you know, let's get all of our information gathered together as best we can before we move forward with something like that. Great. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So, um, Christine, as far as, like, we talked about this in the last meeting, um, and I, I think um, in remembering um, most of our board is in favor of, getting teachers some time to plan together um, and this seemed like the right way to do it. Um, what do you need from us at this point? Like, I just, I mean, I think what we need is more direction on what school's gonna look like, to be honest with you, because it might, it might look different. <laughs> so it feels like we're um, making a plan that might not come to fruition anyway. Um, so I know it's getting late in the year, but I, I think we I think we wait for a little bit longer uh, on guidance from the state on what what school what the guidelines are and give us a chance to kind of map that out. And if it fits in, awesome. Um, we can you know Patty and I can meet and we can talk about a plan for how to go forward. Um, okay. 
but I just think right now when things are just too too up in the air to there's too many other things to plan. <laughs> well, it's like if if we're doing a staggered start, if we're if some kids are going on an A schedule and some on a B schedule, I mean, it's just gonna it's it it doesn't make sense to plan until we know. Yeah, um, yeah. and so yeah, so we would need to make a decision probably by August. Yeah, I would think so. Like, yeah, I'm well, we meet parents. We, yeah. We meet in July. We meet in July. So I, I think we should know more by then. Um, and I'll, I'll talk to John Leonard again. I mean, he was very excited about opening up the after school program, uh, you know, at two o'clock on a Friday. He, he would be more than willing to do that, which, which would hopefully alleviate some of the parent stress that might go along with a different pickup time. Um, so um, we do have that in, in our favor. But I would say by the next meeting, we should make a final decision. Okay. Great. And we may or may not be ready to make that final decision. We may, may or may not, <laughs> but we do our best. <laughs> we'll put it off for another month. Yeah. Um, and just, just so that we have, um, I think so it's in the minutes, um, we're talking about a two o'clock dismissal on Fridays, which would give an hour of planning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, great. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Patty, for hanging out and giving us an update. Um, Okay, summer meals. Summer meals, so I probably can report what I know on that. Um, David has been working with uh, Wendy Moody. I don't know if you're all familiar with her, but she's been pretty pretty fantastic in helping um, the program thus far. And the decision was made to deliver meals to three locations in each community. And we were, um, I was asked about locations a couple of weeks ago, suggested locations, which I put my feelers out and got three location ideas. And um, I emailed Wendy to find out if they were finalized. And I haven't heard back from her. I know David had a meeting with her today. But one will definitely be the rec because kids are going to be there for camp this summer. So if they want to get um, lunch, it can be delivered right to the rec. The other ideas were um, Kelly Meacham offered her house which is a pretty central spot and she uh, you know one of the requests was to have some sort of supervision there so at the rec we have a you know john john is there the camp counselors um kelly has agreed to supervise from afar um at her house i mean she'll be there and then the third location that was north heartland um uh was four corners at the Children's um, Center. I believe that was the third one. Um, but Wendy is really uh, taking the lead on that and setting that up for for us. I don't know, Beth, if you have any more in information on with your with your role. Um, I don't have a ton more information. I, I will say, like at the rec, and if they're doing it at the Children's Center too, those kids can receive and all those meals like from birth to 18 like okay. yeah. so they don't need to they shouldn't have to sign up for them it's just like every kid that's there just gets free lunch okay. um and so we want to get those numbers and make sure we get reimbursed and all those fun yeah. things okay. um so and that would be a selling point for john for camp too like don't yeah. you don't need to bring a lunch like that's awesome yeah um and then the so the last waiver that we were waiting for from the usda did get approved so we don't have to worry about it was um the uh, um what do you call it, so site eligibility, basically. It's like the, since we were below 50% free and reduced. Yes. Um, so normally we wouldn't be able to allow, offer summer meals, but this summer we certainly, we can because of this, that waiver was put into place. So just at the end of last week. So we're really lucky or else we would have been, um, had a little bit of a bigger bill for <laughs> us. Um, the other thing is that I know at the state Right now, um, the Farm to School Network, as well as like Shelburne Farms and Vermont Feed and NOFA and all these folks in Hunger Free are advocating for funding to be going to directly to schools for transportation um, over the summer months to transport food. Um, and so if that gets trickled down, that could we could go back to a delivery model if we get those that financial background um, as well there. And the rules still in place too of like, you know, a kid doesn't have to come to pick up a lunch. Like mom could go and pick up like 
six neighbors lunches and give everyone's name, you know, and they can check off and get their lunches, stuff like that. Okay. So, um, and same as like, you know, if, if grandma is watching a kid, their grandchild, and it's in a di they're from a different district or something, but they're in Heartland at that moment and want to go get a meal, they can go get a meal. Like there's no rules around that. Um, anyone that's happens to be walking by a table of those lunches can get one if they're under 18. So How birth to 18. Sure we have enough lunches without waste being wasteful. They're going to, they're going to send a sign up the, the food um, service. Um, mm -hmm. They'll send a sign up, but yeah. it's also really tricky. Like it's that gentle balance of like wanting to get that number, but then also not being like, Oh, well you didn't sign up. You can't get it. Right. Like, so mm -hmm. you do need to like, play that marketing a little bit um so folks can have that flexibility of like oh we want to go get lunch um we can do that and, and i'm sure craig will figure that out with numbers and you always have some up and down um with that and if there's any other sites you can think of in heartland that would be free open sites you know like any other places where kids are gathering in number um you know that's always an option yeah and and are you in uh, beth uh, I'm assuming Wendy knows all of this information. Oh yeah, she's she's okay. yep, she's good. Okay. Yep. Okay. Great. I'm I'm excited that uh, Kelly offered the farm, but I I think about um, there's a lot of kids around the green in North Heartland that are within walking distance. Um, and I but just they should be able to go to the rec. North Heartland. Oh, North Heartland. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can think of off the top of my head, like. 12, 13 kids that are within walking distance of the green. Um, yeah. And I just feel like Kelly's a little bit um, scarier as a parent. Um, yeah, the or, location. The car. Yeah. yeah, very busy right there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's a good point, Nicole. And I don't think it was definite. I think she was offering. Um, yeah. Because yeah, the, other, the other thing is we've got to find, if it's not there, we have to find a volunteer to go man that site um, right. each day. Right. Yeah. So, um, but, but yeah. David David was finalizing that. I think that's the meeting he had. Um, he had a meeting with Wendy this afternoon, I believe, and they were going to talk about finalizing those sites. So. Um, yeah, it would be really good if those kids could walk. Um, what if about you, if you, what about the North Heartland School? North Heartland School. See, I, I'm I don't feel um, like I have enough information because I'm not that familiar with Heartland. So, if you have <laughs> ideas that make sense, um, if you want to email, um, you can email me. I can forward it, or you can email David and say, you know, we talked about it. Here, are the concerns. Here are some other ideas. That would be awesome because. I asked, um, you know, Linda, she knows, and Kelly, and, and they came back with some ideas, but I don't, when you say the North Heartland School, I'm struggling to see it where it is in my mind. <laughs> it's it's very close to the green, so I was just thinking kids okay. could walk from, from where it. you're talking about, and, um, you know, it's sort of behind, you go on that road yep. behind the green, and it's, it's the old North Heartland School okay. that's there. And the town still owns it and keeps it up. And I mean, not inside, but keeps it, you know, right. mows the lawn and everything. So that could be a, that could be a site. But and that would, would that replace, you? yeah, if you want to email, sir, that'd be great. And that would, that would be in um, exchange for Kelly's, correct? Okay. Yeah. It'd be great to see something up like Quichy Heartland Road, like that area, like up that whole area of town. Oh, also, I live there. Maybe I'm just speaking. <laughs> I was kind of thinking the same thing, but I don't know what the solution yeah, is. Yeah, there's to that. like nothing. I think you could use Patty's um, spot at Draper Road, where she's got. Some oh yeah, that's perfect. Car that, there. I live right down Brothers. Nice <laughs> suggestion, Colleen. <laughs> but I hear you that it sounds like you need a person. You know, it's more about the person than it is the place. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. I know location matters, but yeah, and I, I can't do it, so I don't know. <laughs> no. I don't know where that part of. I it wish I could. From. I yeah. wish I could do. Well, yeah, if you want to send suggestions, that would be awesome. Okay. That would be super helpful. And then we'll I'm sure she'd be glad to have 
have it. And I know Mount Escutney Partnership um, mm -hmm. with Jill Lord um, is like the miracle worker of volunteers. Yep. And so if we do end up needing volunteers, um, she is just amazing. And she so she's been doing this for years of orchestrating volunteers to deliver all the meals for Windsor every day. So yeah, she, she's got it down. And she helped us with our um, food prep volunteers as well. Yeah, yeah, so she's, she's just lovely. Great. Yeah. Um, Christine, I'm typing you a suggestion just while them. Okay, that's great. Um, yeah, I don't no, want to call people out. <laughs> that's totally okay. Um, yeah, so that's what I. That's all I know about the summer meals um, for an update. Okay. Oh, and when do they? Are they starting? To, I didn't hear when they were starting. If it was uh, taking a few weeks off and starting in July. I believe that was the email. Yes, I, that's I believe so. Got it. Are you okay. sure? Because Albert Bridge sent out an email and they're starting on June 22nd. I'm going to look right now. Yeah. I mean, if we don't start right away, it's just, um, it's that whole like, you know, connecting with the food shelf and things like mm -hmm. that and making sure if you know that there's families that'll have kind of struggled. Well, I think if Albert Bridge is starting, then they're getting their food from Craig. It's so got to be. Yeah. But, yeah. Unless but we I, have, don't have our sites in place and volunteers. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe they're doing something supplemental, like just sandwiches or something for that couple weeks, or I don't know, but. Um, I'll keep looking. I, I've read, I, I read it. I thought Craig said they were going to, they were going to need a, a short break, but. Yeah, like cleaning out the kitchen and. Yeah. Out, yeah. Kind of doing a reset. Yeah. Um, so while Christine's uh, looking something up, I just want to take a poll of the board. Who all knows that food goes until Friday for this week? Okay, so I'm the one that doesn't read email very well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering. Yeah, tomorrow's popcorn chicken. You better be on it. <laughs> hey, um, I know from the bus drivers. They've been yeah, I'm just wondering if uh, yeah. we'll yeah. have Linda send out a direct just reminder that food yep. goes until Friday. Yeah. Um, because the other responsible, more much more responsible planning parent at my stop also did not know. So <laughs> um, the two of us were a little in the dark, assuming it was the last day, and it wasn't. Um, okay. Christine, did you learn something? No, I'm just emailing Linda so I don't forget. I'll um, keep looking at that. I'll let you know. I'll find it. Okay. I could have done that. Um, okay. So let's go on. Or, I think we're good. Um, Christina will get back to us on summer meals. Let's move on to the retreat. Um, I uh, we need. I think we should have a retreat. Last year it took us three months to get through the retreat agenda, um, and uh, <laughs> it's a little shorter this year. Um, but uh, I would really like to try to do something in person, um, socially distance, um, bring your own food. How do people feel about that? People, I, I'm seeing nodding heads. Yeah. I'm fine with it as okay. long as, you know, unless there's some great big outbreak or something. Right. Yeah. Right. Depending. Um, unless any of you have a fever. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> we can all bring our own thermometer and show each other. Um, and you're 30 feet out. And <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Uh, we'll have to zoom in. We may have to schedule our retreat um, based on weather. Um, yeah. Oh. Nikki, we'd, I'd be happy to host because we, we have a sort of big outdoor space if the weather's nice that we could use. So I'd be happy to host it, um, but okay. absolutely it would be dependent on, on it being a nice evening. Yeah. Um, and actually, I just had the thought of usually the rec center has the big tent up in the summer. That's true. That would be another possibility. Maybe I'll email John yeah. um, and ask about the tent. Because that would be a great place. Yeah. Um, some evening at five to. I don't know how busy it is there, but you know, I don't, and some of the stuff we talk about is confidential. So that might be, that would be the only thought I have. I don't know if people are there wandering around at night or whatever, and we wouldn't want exposure to that or or them to hear or whatever. I don't know. 
Yeah, most of our retreat does tend to be public. Um, mm -hmm. There is a little bit that's um, in executive session. And we may just have to handle that at a different time remotely. Or um, so we could, well, we could plan on Sarah's and then we'll maybe have the tent as a backup if it exists. I don't know. Um, that's good. So do we want to look at dates right now? Do you want me to send out a doodle poll? How do you want to do this? Well, David's not here. Right. So we might doodle want poll. to, we might want to doodle poll it. And we may want to try to have it a little bit earlier just because yes. bugs mm -hmm. and darkness and whatever, if we have to be outside. Yeah. yeah. That's good idea. I mean, maybe we should just go with yeah. our original July meeting date. Which is, what's the date? Um, would that be the 20th? Yeah, the 20th. Okay. That's July 20th? Yeah. I'll be on vacation. Um, but okay. That doesn't mean everything has to stop. <laughs> um, I think there's other... We could also do a Tuesday. I think all the Mondays are taken up with um, board meetings for David. Um, yeah. Beth, are you going somewhere or are you? You're on mute. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we have, a, we have a, a camp in our family up in Maine on a lake. So it's hopefully we can just like drive from one spot to another spot and just sit by the lake for the week. <laughs> Jealous. <laughs> I know, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Who knows? Like, we're just hopeful. I'm supposed to be in Cape Cod next week. And oh. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I guess tentatively, maybe I'll say the 14th, 15th, or 16th um, so that Beth is around. How does that look for you guys? Hold on. Some. Some of those are not good. Okay. Um, let's see, hold on. My phone says that John's supposed to be at a conference in Portugal. I don't think that's happening either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, those are all those are all okay. Those are all okay. Hallelujah. Okay. I just yeah. have a I have a training on the fourteenth and sixteenth until four. Okay. Um, is it? I could come later. Whatever. It doesn't matter. What? Okay, so is it just you that has the training, or is it? It's, it's just me. I'm taking the collaborative. Well, hopefully, I'll be taking the collaborative problem solving uh, okay. tier two training. Okay. I could just come when it's done too, or I could whatever. I wanted to make sure I didn't fry like you know three people that were going to that training, and then also yeah. having the we'll just fry one person. Sorry, Brittany. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. Um, so I am. Just bear with me for a second. I'm going to start to. Um, start an email to David. Um, and we talked about July 14 through 16. Okay. Okay. So I'll email that to David. Um, and maybe we'll just do a doodle poll. Um, and starting around four o'clock. Does that work? Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, good. Okay. Moving on. Um, update on the acceptance and understanding committee. Um, and I think that Sarah brought this up, um, and I think we'll just lead with uh, kind of the broader background. Um, clearly, we're going through a national movement right now, um, and with the Black Lives Matter movement, um, and that national movement collided at home um, with uh, some comments um, from administrative members in a neighboring school. Um, and that gave me a lot of thought as to how I would react. And um, it, it made me dig deep um, about my understanding of the movement and um, and the language around it. Um, and so I think that is why Sarah proposed an update um, on here. 
and uh, and also wanted to kind of take this time to um, show our support for the Mount Muscatney Board. Um, I know that they are, it, it's a really hard decision um, what they did and I, I personally support their decision and uh, I feel for them. So, um, Sarah, do you wanna go from there? Is there more? <laughs> I mean, just that, uh, just that I also, I also support their decision and I, I want to, you know, say that, say that publicly. Um, and I think it made me think about, I, I think the last couple of weeks have just really made me think about, you know, what, what's my, what's my corner where, you know, where are the places that I have privilege and some power and some, you know, and can make a difference. And, um, you know, in thinking about our work here on the school board, um, and uh, and you know the fact that that I, I am so glad that our administration has supported the acceptance and understanding committee. Um, I'm so grateful to the the members of it who have worked so hard. Um, I'm so you know I'm so grateful to Christine and to David for showing so much support. And so I think we're actually very well placed to kind of say okay we're we're there <laughs> what more can we do what you know how better can we support this uh the, how can we support this committee even more than we already are and what are some things that members of the committee might ask of us uh that we could think about um so i think that's i, I think i just wanted to kind of open that discussion um and to also say that i thought christine's uh statement in the newsletter about this moment was just really beautifully done. Um, thank you, Christine. I just, I really thought that was well done. You're welcome. I agonized over that letter for about, I don't know, 10 hours probably, so. Yeah. It was it was really uh, well done. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and being a member of the Equity Practitioners Network this year, I have learned so much that I, that I just didn't know. Um, and and I'm thankful to be on in in that on that committee, and thankful that it it's a two year commitment. So I have a whole other year um, working with with that um, network. So I'm grateful for that. I am super um, supportive of the acceptance and understanding committee. I, I'm, I think we are lucky to be in. The, well, we've worked to be in this place, and we have some really passionate members. And we've met. We met last week. To talk about what we can do going forward and I've committed a uh, staff meeting time every month to do a little bit of this work in small chunks with the with the larger staff um, they are going to the committee we say they but Brittany and I are both on the committee we're going to be working with them to organize um, materials by kind of uh, pod level for teachers to use like what book if you know what books are out there that would lend themselves to this unit to make sure we're representing all 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 people um, when we're teaching and to do an audit of our curriculum and our library books and to see what we have um, I can say that the way that you can help support us and you know there are many ways but I know um, we wrote a grant last year to have money to uh, um, have Rebecca Haslam from Seed the Way come and do two uh, staff workshops with us. We did want, we did our spring one last week virtually with her. And it started with just implicit, implicit bias. We all have it, we mm -hmm. all have it. And where does it show up? And just, we need to start paying attention to that and our, and our, and our privilege that we don't often think about. Um, so we started that work, we had some, some great discussion last week with her and then um, are starting to plan moving forward but we would love to continue to partner with her mm -hmm. or her organization and um, that that takes funding <laughs> I mean, just throw it out there um, she's more than willing to work with us I, I did put a little bit of money for that in the budget for FY 21 so there is some in there but it's really important work and we all are doing the best we can but we're certainly not experts and so it's nice to have somebody that is an expert helping lead that work. So I think Brittany wants to, to add something. Yeah, uh, just today during the six eight or seven eight meeting, um, their their what their unit they're discussing is is about um, global issues and just current issues and global issues. Um, and 
Tina had mentioned that part of through part of that, she wants to have the seventh and eighth graders or some of them go through and do an audit of the library to make sure that mm -hmm. we have um, equitable representation of you know culture and race and everything within our library too. So that'll be a pretty large endeavor that she's hoping to have student help with. Yeah, great. So yeah, we're moving forward and we're, we're excited. We feel like we're in a pretty good place. Um, um, but often I will say, and Rebecca said this in her training, you have these committees and, and in Vermont, you know, there's not much diversity where we are. We're pretty, pretty white. And so we get off track. We, we start talking about other, um, other things like we have this inequity in social, uh, um, uh, social status, right? We have the haves and the have nots and, and it, 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 it distracts us from the conversation about race. And so we really need to focus on that. This is what we're talking about right now. It's not that the other stuff is not important and we don't, and there is a place for it. Um, and Rebecca suggested that maybe there's a subcommittee that just focuses on, on racism um, moving forward. So we're gonna talk about that as well, but appreciate your support. Yeah. Yeah. I can just comment too. Um, I was so pleased um, a day or two after George, George Floyd's murder, um, Mrs. Pogue assigned reading to third graders um, on the March on Washington and, and the current um, and George Floyd's murder. And it was um, our family read it together, you know, with Silas as well as a first grader. And um, it was just because I've been was struggling hugely on how to enter this conversation with our with my kids we have black and brown family members like how do we move this forward and um i was just so proud that and like like this is my school like this is who we are we give these assignments and i just really hope mrs pogue um really got i mean i wrote her a thank you note um but <laughs> i mean i'm hoping she didn't get the other notes as well you know in that that she continues down that realm because i think just using education as that tool is just so great and it was helped me so much as like just a mom <laughs> like of yeah. like oh scholastic actually knows how to talk about this <laughs> oh my god <laughs> so it was really yeah. fantastic that's I, great i'd also like to give a shout out to heather pogue um she uh i talked to her a bit um it, about what was going on in windsor and then um also with the materials that she pulled together for the third grade. Um, and it was awesome because she shared them with the other grades. And so we got the same assignment in third grade and fifth grade um, in our house. And uh, she's on top of just putting those assignments together, she is really working hard um, on understanding how to convey um, some of these issues and finding age appropriate materials and really digging deep um, and so I, I just am really impressed with the work she's done and really thankful that she's so willing to share it with all of us. Yes. Yeah, she's been incredible. She's on the committee and she, she has a very large voice and people, you know, look to her, <laughs> to be honest. So we're, yeah, we're fortunate. I did, I did also compliment her on that because people were asking for resources mm -hmm. on how to talk to their children. Um, because we haven't really had many of these conversations, right? I mean, that's part of the problem. So she'll continue. Uh, I think that sounds us, great. Yeah, and I think for us, for a bunch of, you know, well-to-do white people, I think, you know, also just teaching our children more around being those allies. And what does that mean? And what does that look like in everyday life? I think is just huge because we all need allies regardless. Um, but especially, you know, our other, yeah, like it just, I think that's a really, um, key message, no matter where, you know, no matter how white we are, like that, I think is, is something that can always be taught. Yeah. Christina, so we have to ask yeah. you if you got any comments on um, your letter. Um, I did not. Okay. Which is okay. I mean, I got a nice email from Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> and <Nikki. laughs> um, well, and I did, I, you know, I, I asked David to read it first. I, I realize I'm taking a little bit of a position of not a little, little bit, but, um, and, um, you know, I, I asked Nikki to read it as well, just to make sure I was doing, you know, that it was okay to send out. Um, so, um, but, you know, 
I don't know how many people read the newsletter. <laughs> so it's the end of the year. It's busy. And so, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully it's read and well, well, well received by people in town. That's my feeling. So I'm, I, uh, I asked that because I've, I've, I'm not a Facebook person at all. And I did go to Facebook and looked at some of the posts on, um, Windsor's Facebook page. Yeah. And, um, it's really divided the community yeah. um, and it's it's um, disheartening and uh, I, I hope we don't get to a point where it divides our community. Yeah. Um, and so I, I really do appreciate uh, you getting in front with that letter. Yeah. Um, so thank you. My pleasure. Yes, absolutely. Okay. There's a there is a state task force as well that's being formed. So mm -hmm. I think the state um, recognizes how important this work is as well, and um, they're going to they're going to tackle it. Which I think you know, kudos to the state of Vermont for doing that. And um, you guys know Elizabeth Burroughs. She's been a huge part of the work that's going on at the state. Yeah. Um, she has been just pushing, pushing, pushing. Um, on equity and bias training. Um, yeah. And so I think I, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to continuing to see the work that she does because every time I talk to her, I'm like, you did what? <laughs> so it's, just, it's, it's cool that she's getting things pulled together. Um, so, okay. I, yeah. I didn't know that. That's great. But I'm really glad that she was on the Windsor School Board. I mean, I'm glad she was in that spot yep. when this happened. And we are talking about an SU committee as well. Um, David has um, talked about that, and um, it's on our on our, on our, on our to do list. We need to we need to form an SU committee to do this work as well. Yep. So, so and does just, the state task force have a s education component to it? Do we know? You know, the, there was an application. That? It came to me through my equity practitioners network. Um, um, so I believe so, Colleen. I believe, you know, they were looking I mean, down. It would make sense that it would, but yeah. I, I hadn't read anything specific about it. I'll see if I can find it. I did find the um, food. It said they, they, would, they, were tr they would try not to have a break in the delivery and it would go until early August. So it sounds like, Brittany, you, you read that email carefully. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> I pay attention when it comes to food. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. If you only knew how many Google Drive folders I had. <laughs> I don't want to know. Oh, it's crazy. <laughs> Although I can find stuff pretty well. Um, I guess I was going to say that what troubles me about the um, a Scutney board decision is that I live my life with a principle that uh, us human beings can better ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that opportunity was given. And that's sad. And I don't know if it's too late already, but. And then as far as just being a board member, you know, you, there's principles you have to do this work with. And it's a huge decision. And like how much of the community was heard in a process like that? It was, it seemed, I, you know, perhaps I don't know a fraction of it, but it, it was fast. It seemed like a reaction. Um, you know, and the, we all have that implicit bias thing, you know, and bias is or whatever it is. Um, I mean, not whatever it is. I understand that concept and we hold those things. And, and moreover than that, we we're encumbered by, uh, you know, whether we're man or woman or what we do to make money and, it troubles me that 
you know, when you're a board member, you have to lay that all on the table. And I don't think that happened. Our friend Elizabeth Burroughs is going to be standing in August 11th in the Democratic primary for the Windsor one seat. And she has now got a whole lot more name recognition than she had a little while ago. And I haven't seen that um, laid on the table in any of the news stories about this. And that doesn't seem right. It just, it ought to be reported on. So it's very upsetting that the community has, you know, so much investment in, in on a person who, like I said, I believe is capable of change. And then uh, you know, to conclude that, well, you guys know the conclusion. And, and Scott, I, I agree, like the uh, something, you know, like I'm saying, it wasn't the political end of it. This was not publicized. And I don't know, I, I don't think in my mind, I don't think this was a political act um, for me personally. Um, no, I don't think it was a political act. I think that that information should have just been shared in, in some of the yeah reporting. But, but Scott, honestly, I would not. I yeah, I would not have my children. I would not want my children to be attending a school that had leadership that is willing to voice that at a in a public setting. It made me ashamed i wanted to cry to think of like any student that read that and then was immediately feeling like their value was diminished at that moment i have no problem with their with the board's decision whatsoever because i think about those families and those students that were crushed at that and all their other people that just read that and thought this is not what this community is about. And then I think there's a ton of learning to do, be done. We all have it. And I absolutely agree. We all have a ton. Every community has so much to, work to do. But that learning can't happen at that administrative level. It, it can happen and it needs to happen. But that needs to happen right now, not as principal of that school. Um, and she does need to do that learning. But it's not at that position just as right appropriate. not at the expense of the kids nope yeah yeah i agree yeah i would agree with i that. have full faith that le learning can happen I, absolutely yeah. yep yep absolutely as principal you have uh you have a sacred duty i think as as an educator and a leader to um to, to make sure the kids feel safe and um, and that they feel secure and that all kids feel safe and secure. And I think there was a, you know, I think there was just a, a, a sort of broken um, chain there where that that no longer existed. Um, and I, 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 I agree with Beth. I would not have felt safe or um, or comfortable. Yeah, and there's there's more to the story as well. And <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. There's got to be a lot to that story. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I did find the application. <laughs> it's a, a a racial equity task force, and it's from the state of Vermont. Um, seeking applicants to serve on a task force focused on advancing racial equity. The task force will be advisory to the governor um, through May 31st, 2021, or is extended by the governor. So um, the application period ended on June 12th, but I'm sure there's there were a lot of people that um, that applied to be on that task force, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, so I'm gonna call that 
uh, bullet done, but Christine, okay. um, keep yeah. us posted, um, or if well, the um, yep. acceptance and understanding committee wants to come talk to us at some point. Um, yeah, I'm we, sure they would, yep. Yeah. Okay. That would be great, maybe, Okay. Maybe leading into the school year in August, or they could mm -hmm. even, we'll, we can look at the agenda for the July. Okay. Um, yeah, Scott. Yeah, I've had so much, um, uh, I've learned so much uh, reading Paul Gorski's work. If you check out um, his uh, Equity Literacy okay. in, uh, Institute, is that what it's called? Yeah. As a, among other things, he has an awesome YouTube channel. So if you're, if you have time to sit there and watch that, he, he speaks really well. And then he, uh, Speaks in a way I can understand. Let's put it that way. <clears throat> he was the he was our first two days of training, Scott, this year, at the beginning of October. That was the beginning of our equity network training. We spent two days with him. He's fabulous. I understand he's been to Vermont a few times. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, and while I'm speaking, um, could we back up on the agenda just briefly, if it was possible, to the um, early release day? I had a question about that. Mm -hmm. So I just was wondering about the uh, the Friday afternoon um, proposed you know time period is how is that something that was arrived at with the how did that come to be? Um, it came to be probably um, a, a bit ago. I, I can't pinpoint exactly, but. I've heard staff, um, as you know, Windsor gets out at 12 or 12.30 every week. Um, and so, I, which gives them a lot of planning time. Um, and they have moved forward on some initiatives in their building because they've had the time to do it. Um, and so, it's it's just come up, like, why don't, why don't all schools in our SU have that same, um, Oh no, it's not the concept I'm asking you about. I'm ask, I I support that concept if it gives the professionals yep. enough time to uh, or some time to do what they need to do um, with no students around. But I mean, like, why Friday afternoon? Oh um, well, that's when Windsor releases. So I was thinking if they continue, there could be some collaboration if if potential. Um, and the other and the other piece was uh, looking at our master schedule that was created for FY21, which who knows if it'll <laughs> stay in place or as is or need to be tweaked, which is probably more likely. And that was a time when the schedule allowed for it and kids wouldn't miss their relate, um, related arts times. That's that's the sole reason. And well, I take that back. And if you're a parent and you're going away for the weekend, you might be able to head out a little bit early. That was another consideration. Um, well, the, so thing, the thing that came up in my, my mind was that it, it's, it's checking those boxes, Christine, but what about the professionals and who is supposed to benefit and is, is that the best time? Uh, and you, you, did men, you did mention Windsor, so, um, you know, maybe that, maybe they'd, get together somehow, but um, yeah. Um, yeah, certainly it would be, um, certainly I wouldn't mandate Friday. I mean, it would it would come up with staff before we moved it forward. But just at, as a, you know, those were the, those were the thoughts around it initially. Thank you. Yeah. And as a parent observer of Fridays, um, Friday by far has the biggest pickup crowd yeah, um, which means that it's got the most parents. To me, that implies to me that it's the day with the most parents that are available at pickup time um, to take their children back. Um, I think, and Sarah, I know is a pickup a lot. Like the the Friday line is substantially larger than <laughs> any other day of the week. <laughs> yeah, you can't find parking on Friday. And in fact, that is one logistical thing that we may want to think about when we do go ahead with this is just the traffic flow because yeah. it's pretty hairy on Fridays anyway, and this may make it even more hairy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good point. Good okay. point. I think, did we catch up on all old items? Um, Thank you. So, 
Sure. Uh, moving on to the last item on the agenda, which would be the school resource officer. Uh, so oh. a lot of schools right now are getting rid of their school resource officer. Um, yeah. And I think that the reason that we have a school resource officer is very different from the reason that other schools have resource, of, resource officers. Um, but so I kind of, I think it's appropriate for us to revisit it. Um, we did budget for a school resource officer um, in our budget that passed. Um, and I also kind of wanted an update on what our school resource officer has been doing. Yep, so I can I can fill you in. Um, you know, we, we I was tracking um, times that we used Paul before COVID and then and it was pretty pretty regular. He was it was it was really um, I I felt he was a valuable resource, um, and he was in the school every day, roughly an hour, and it would have been there more, except we asked him to to kind of take it easy and um, slow slow and steady, building relationships and just being there. Um, since COVID, he does a drive. Uh, he drives to the school every day and makes sure the premise is secure and. Um, I have I've had to call him with a couple of um, questions during this time that I just needed a, a police advice on, and he has you know picked up the phone and we've chatted, um, and then you know he, we asked him to come to the parade on, on Saturday. So he's and he I think he was um, Bettina reached out to me to see if he would do the high school parade as well the week before, and when I spoke to him he said absolutely just you know have her call me. I don't, I didn't get the, you know, final on that, um, as she was organizing that parade. So that's what he's been doing since COVID. Mm -hmm. so if that helps. Um, so it sounds like his workload, he's not talking to you directly in the building, but he's still at the building, um, daily and talking to you as needed. Yes. That would be a good summary. Okay. He is, um, I'm wondering, just sort of thinking about not knowing what's happening in the fall, and I wonder whether there's any benefit to making the contract a little more flexible or, you know, just so that in case we're in the same situation in the fall that, yep. you know, it could more closely reflect what we actually need. Um, I don't know. So do you want me to talk to David about that? I mean, he negotiates that contract with um, Windsor PD. I mean, what, I, I, I'm more, I guess I'm more interested in sort of how would that meet your needs? Do you feel comfortable with that? How, you know? Yeah, I do, Sarah. I do feel comfortable with that. I think, you know, not knowing what the fall looks like, um, I think that makes sense. Yeah. Um, if there's a way to make that contract more flexible, yeah. you know, I, I'm in favor of that. I, we do, I and mean, Brittany and I chatted about this before, uh, this week. I mean, it is reassuring having him at our fingertips for sure, yep. and we've used him that way. So I would hate to lose him altogether. Yep. But if we're not in school, right? He, he he's doing his due diligence, trying to yep. do what he's supposed to. But he's driving around an empty school. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> And he's like, I'm just making sure there's no, no funny business going on there. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so he's, he's trying, I will say that. He's, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And, and I do, I do want to say that in thinking about all of this, and I think we all have been taking second and third and fourth looks at, at pretty much everything the last two weeks. Yeah. Um, I feel, I feel grateful that we have a situation that is very, uh, you know, is, is, is really closely tied to the will of the school and that we have yeah. this committee and that people are are willing to um you know to make it look the way we want it to look rather than the way that someone yeah. externally thinks it should look and um i think that's i think that's good i think the involvement of that committee and the the sensitivity to these issues that exists is um is good so yeah i agree so I'm I'm I, I don't mind talking to David and just you know picking his brain and seeing what he thinks if you're okay with that. Yeah. Okay. I think that'd All be right. great. Okay. If, if others if others agree as well. I, you know. Yeah, I, I I totally agree, Sarah. And I was just wondering too, if like, if there's more to get into around what additional training is going on for him mm -hmm. around these issues. Um, 
and if we could require it, I don't know if we're allowed to do things like that, um, but I think that would be something yep. just, and also I think just peace of mind for um, parents and families to know that somebody stepping into that role in the school would be as highly trained as we could possibly get them to be on these matters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know he did the um, bias training last, before he started last summer, um, that was a requirement. And I can't remember if it was an annual training or or not, but I can certainly find out. And there may be more trainings offered now. And, and does he have a camera on him? Um, in the vehicle, there's a camera, I'm pretty he sure. He doesn't have a, like a, what do they call them? Like their chest camera thing or whatever. I don't think so. Um, I haven't noticed one. Brittany, are you here or are you not here? She had to step away for a minute. So no, Brittany, she's, 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 she's still. Um, She's on bedtime. I'll, I'll ask him. I haven't noticed a camera on him, mm. but that doesn't mean, you know, there isn't one. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Christine. Yeah, I, I actually, um, since since we are paying him for his time, doing yeah, additional. Can we pay him to get more training? <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll ask. Like, yep. um, I, I think get himself a camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Build one. What the heck? Um, yep, I'll find out. That does seem like a logical thing. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, Christine, you're, um, I think in this COVID world, um, your principal report fell off. Um, do you have it anything has. else? Like, it's been a big week, and I kind of feel like there are a lot of celebrations that you should tell us about. <laughs> yeah, we had, um, well, we had our graduation Saturday, and um, it, it, it went, I think, as well as could be expected. We did have a couple um, learned that um, when, I don't know, I still haven't figured it out. It was a lot of behind the scenes work, putting it together and getting it just right. And it's actually, um, for me, it was more stressful virtually than in person um, <laughs> because of the tech piece. And, you know, we, we had, um, I had met with the tech team and they really, recommended just pre-recording as much as I could because when you have larger meetings, people get kicked out, you know, things things happen. So so we did that. I'm, I'm pretty good at iMovie now. I have to say I've learned a lot. So I'm um, appreciative of being able to do that. But there were like three families that came on and I was presenting and it kicked me off. And I don't know if they hit present. I mean, that's what it seemed like to me that they did that and maybe it, I'm assuming not intentionally, <laughs> but one time it kicked me off and unfortunately I, there was some noise in my house and I wanted to be here because my husband is a tech guy. And so if there was any problem, I wasn't going to be sitting alone in my office at school, but it was some unexpected uh, construction going on in my house that day that I couldn't change. And so, oh I, so I put my earphones on so that, um, you wouldn't hear it and muted myself when, when I could, but it does something funny when you're, when you're presenting a movie and sound and we'd worked it out all ahead of time. But as soon as somebody took that screen, boy, it messed everything up. So yeah. I panicked a little bit like Jason, <laughs> uh, but it went, it, other than that, um, it went, it went pretty well. Um, so it was great. The parade was the best part for me, seeing the kids, just being able to see the kids and wave and, um, and then we've had some end of the year stuff with with teachers and doing special stuff with the kids who are trying their best and to putting together an end of year you know farewell video um, was fun actually actually sad because I recorded the buses doing their traditional loop and there were no kids on them so it was like <laughs> it was actually really sad but um, the feedback from it has been good the parents appreciated it. And actually, we have been um, nonstop in planning for PD and delivering PD. Um, Patty's been on the leadership, the PD leadership committee, which has been wonderful, having teachers' um, voices at the table and leading some of that. Angie's been um, stellar, and 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 we're just it's it's been challenging. It's been a lot um, of work, but I think it's worth it. And I think. Um, overall, you know, the staff is exhausted, but they've done an incredible job. I couldn't be more proud to be part of such an amazing team. Um, they've stepped up. They, 
I mean, they've just, they've worked together. It's, I think this, this being able to meet virtually um, is not my favorite, obviously, but it has helped us bond a little more as a staff, I think. We've just been able to, to meet and talk and had that time, which has been wonderful. So we have our last um, end of year staff appreciation celebration on Friday. Um, it's virtual, we planned it virtual and videos are coming in to honor the people that are leaving from staff members. So I'll be putting that together this week. And, um, you know, we've just been continuing on. It's been, it's been a lot, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but <laughs> but we've, done, we've done it, so that's good. Um, I don't know, uh, Brittany or Angie, or if you want to add any anything at all. That's what I'm working on. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like I plan in the morning what's going to happen in the afternoon, Yeah. Um, which is not the way I like to plan PD. But that being said, we um, I do know that there are systems that didn't plan any PD for their staff during these extra snow days. Um, and I think that what we have planned as people thinking, moving forward, thinking about what's possible, a lot of people want to talk a lot about what is going to happen when we're in the buildings. And I came to the realization that that's probably helpful too, because once they can get their brain wrapped around what it is it might look like, then they can, they can put that away for a while to focus on having an interdisciplinary unit that they can use um, no matter what it looks like. Um, so uh, yeah, we're spending some time uh, thinking about software and platforms tomorrow, or maybe Wednesday, it's asynchronous, so it's whenever people wanna do it. Um, and I think we're planning a whole across SU share out, and that'll be, I think that'll be fun. And uh, people are excited about a common drive where they can put re their unit plans in with their resources. We expect the teachers to have a plan um, that is mostly, the, you know, the, all the details might not be there, but they have the big idea and they have a, like a, a schedule on how each person on the team fits in with the kids. And then we'll do our best to make that happen for them in the fall. Um, I've been very encouraged with the conversation and, and um, there has been uh, Patty and Christine helped um, on the instructional planning team and there were representatives from across the supervisory union. And, you know, I my team is is Gina Davis, our literacy coach. So the two of us can hardly plan SU-wide um, um, SU -wide in service. So it's been wonderful to have that opportunity. So I really appreciate that. And I hope that it's been valuable. It will be valuable for people and also honors where they're at at this time of year. Last Friday, we had our collaborative problem solving refresher, which was really excellent. Despite the fact that VTEL was down in Heartland, yeah. electricity <laughs> was out in Reading. Um, yeah. so different people couldn't join in, but um, that was very good. And then we had an opportunity to process, um, to process what, school closure has meant for people and and how we can use what we've learned moving forward and we had small teams that met and it was really good i really um felt um that i did hear from some teams that said it was really helpful to be able to share those heavy feelings because that's yes. um you know there's a lot of that and that was um in response i think it was patty that brought it up at the planning uh, meeting that uh, she had been to a recent Melnick, Dave Melnick training and he said, you can't move on until you've processed what has happened. And uh, we embrace that and and the, the team, the champions team made that happen again. It takes all of us to really plan PD that's helpful for everybody. So anyway, I just wanna say thank you to everybody. Yeah, the, the, there's, there's one other thing the staff is really, um, been pretty amazing about and that's um, you know we're moving some classrooms this summer to create the pod structure that we um, have come up with for next year and hopefully future years because we don't really want to change it again for a while um, but you know not being able to get into the building and then be given a day or two to go in and um, get all your stuff packed up to move to a different classroom is a big ask um, 
and then no complaints. I mean, all the teams I met with to talk about, actually Patty volunteered, I was like, Pat. she's like, well, it's gonna be a good time to clean out and hoe out some stuff, so I'll, I'll move my room. So, but, um, you know, those meetings with teachers, um, they, uh, the decision to let staff come in the building happened a few weeks earlier than was anticipated. So those conversations had to happen quickly and the staff was really great about it. Um, so we just now have to figure out when, when we can get in and s set up our new room. So, um, we're working on that, but nice. Yeah. That sounds like there's a lot going on right now. There is. Yep. <laughs> and we survived. We survived. <laughs> That's the most important part. Yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah. we're at uh, setting the next agenda. Um, and uh, believe it or not, we are ahead of schedule. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the next agenda, the next, the next meeting is the retreat. Um, so I'd like to keep the agenda somewhat light. Um, and so we definitely need a COVID update because in theory, we might know something by then. Yep, hopefully. Um, are we, I mean, are we pretty good on hirings? We'll have a math, hopefully. Um, okay, so we'll, we'll keep that on there. Yep. yep. Um, and I, I wonder if there'll be um, some information from our, we are continuing our work with Portrait of a Graduate. The strategic right. planning is happening. So that would be a that good. That would be good. Yeah. Because that should help us inform our. How many board members are on Portrait? It's two of us. Okay. Um, so that would probably be good. Yeah. Yeah. And that's part of, we could evolve the retreat around portrait a bit too. Yeah. Um, so, okay. That looks good to me. You got it, Diane? Diane's frozen in my There screen. she is. <laughs> Just give me a thumbs up. Yes, I do. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Okay. Uh, so we do have an executive session. Um, to talk about, I'm um, going to title it personnel. Um, and so I think we can stop recording. Uh, well, first, uh, we have to make a motion to move into executive session. Thank you, Patty. Wait, hold on, oh, Patty. Yeah. Oh, oh, I just oh, wanted to tell oh, Patty, sorry. my kid's favorite thing for the year was, I asked them, and they said it was the Cliff Book Days. Yeah. She yeah. did a great job. So tell Patty that. Yes. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Sorry, Beth. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so do we have a motion to move into executive session? I move. I'll move. Okay, so Beth was first, and then Colleen. Um, <clears throat> who's, who's our uh, clerk? Who's, who's recording? Uh, Angie's recording. Angie. I'm going to stop recording now. Okay, sure. yes. Well, we, we all oh, need to vote. So all those in favor of moving into executive session, aye. aye. Okay. Um, and who's our clerk? So Diane can exit now. Thank you, Diane. The clerk.